In the name of God, my name is Mehdi Kortnavasi. In this movie, I am going to talk about chapter 5. Are we all agreed? Service design part 1. The relationship management process in ITIL. Let's start. In this chapter, I am talking about knowing how the service design stage of the life cycle works and seeing how to manage service levels, cataloging information about live services, and managing third party suppliers. The main purpose of the ITIL service design stage of the life cycle is the design of new or change services for introduction into the live environment. Let's start with understanding some basic principles. Keeping in mind the four P's or P's of service design, you must consider four areas when designing service management. People. Ensure you have the right people in place with the right skills and training is the most important part of the service. Then process. The service agreement of service management processes. Make sure they are properly designed and fit your needs. The next P is product or technology. The IT service themselves align with any tools or underpinning technology. Again, ensure they are appropriate. The next P is partner or supplier. Ensure you have the right third party supplier in place that are able to help you deliver and support the service. Knowing the five aspects of service design, I could have titled this section the scope of the service design stage. What sort of thing do you design in this stage? Clearly, you design the service, but when doing so, you must also identify the impact on the other areas that may be affected by the design. ITIL refers to these areas as the five aspects of service design. Here are service solution, designing the new or change services. You gather and agree all the functional requirements and estimate the resources and capabilities you need to develop and operate the service. The next is service management systems and tools. For example, a service desk called logging tool. You must establish a set of requirements and acquire to or develop the tools to meet these requirements. ITIL gives a special mention here to the service portfolio from which you extract the high-level business requirements for new services. The next is technology architecture and management systems. Tools and systems that must be in place to support the design of the infrastructure, data, and environment. The next is processes, designing the service management processes. Designing and implementing these processes can be time-consuming and complex. And the last is measurement system, methods and metrics. Not the actual monitoring tools themselves, though you use them to gather much of your measurement data. The emphasis here is on designing a structure to collect, 
the right measurements and metrics that provide the necessary visibility and ability to control the service and the service management process. Creating a service design package or FDP is a package of documents that define all aspects of the design and requirements. This package is one of the main output of the service design stage of the service life cycle. You produce a FTP for each new service, major change or service removal. The FTP details all aspects of the service through the subsequent stages of the service life cycle. The following is a brief overview of what a typical FDP includes. Business and service requirements. Service requirements or SLRs or service level agreement or SLAs. The design of the preferred solution organizational readiness assessment service life cycle plan for the introduction of the service and the service acceptance criteria including criteria for sign off of the service by the business managing service levels or service level management you don't know whether you hit the target if you don't know where the target is. Everyone needs standards, otherwise you are fighting in the dark. What do you think the service level management process does? Yep, it manages the service levels. I like to summarize the service level management process in the following ways. Define, agree, and document service levels. Monitor, report, and review service levels. And improve service levels. Continually. A quick introduction to the marketing mix. The marketing mix is a practice tool used to determine a product's offer. It is associated with the four P's of marketing when planning for a product. However, what we are going to look at are the seven P's of marketing that are related to the service industry. The seven P's are Product You have to create a clear definition of your product and services that help the customer make an informed decision. Price. This is the financial investment the customer makes in order to purchase your products and services. You have to consider price setting, discounting, guarantees, payment terms as well as credit collection. Place. This is your practice location, whether it is a storefront or an online service. Promotion. This refers to the channels you use to communicate the benefits and value of your product to persuade consumers to become customers of your practice. People. Your people are your practice, so getting the right people in the right roles with the right skills is essential. Process. These are the easy to follow steps of how we do things, enabling staff to be more proactive at their level of authority. Physical environment. All the necessary paperwork that supports the practice's services that make up the physical environment. It's all about practicing the seven P's in your marketing plan to ensure marketing success. Actually, the four P's of the marketing is not exactly the 
four P's of the service design. Here is a people, process, product, and partner. And in the marketing is a product, price, promotion, and place. But there are some similarity between two of these concepts, so I included this movie as a compression of the common concepts. Let's back a SLA again. Is a service level agreement. With SLA, you set the expectations of both parties. With SLAs, you can measure the service and you have clear targets to achieve. And without SLA, you don't know whether you any good at providing the service. Without SLA, you may either over or under achieve. And without SLA, you can never be right. You must make sure that all those who help provide the service first understand the part they play in delivering them. That means putting underpinning agreements in place. These are operational level agreements or OLAs and underpinning contracts or UC. Let's start with operational level agreements. An SLA is an agreement between an IT service provider and a customer. The SLA describes the IT service, documents service level targets, and specifies the responsibilities of the IT service provider and the customer. The SLA is the main agreement. Without it, the customer doesn't know what it's getting and the provider doesn't know what to do provide. The SLA should be in clear, unambiguous business language and cover aspects such as availability, capacity, security, and IT service continuity. Gone are the days when the IT department deliberately included Wagu target so that it could tweak the reports to make things look good or when you could Inherit SLAs and continue with them without any understanding of whether they were achievable or measurable. Nowadays, many companies cannot afford to have an onboard IT support team or they're too large to be able to handle all IT operations, or simply realize that IT is distracting them from their business focus. Other businesses have mission critical and cannot tolerate any downtime, not to mention the cost of the whole IT department that goes up and up every day. So it's time to ask for an SLA, Service Level Agreement. That's what we're here to provide you with. Our call center is ready to answer your calls 24-7 with our SLA when an IT problem occurs regardless of its level of complexity, companies are confident that help is only a phone call away. Our team enjoys the highest industry certifications such as ITIL, CCIE, Microsoft, Oracle, HP, etc. And he is highly trained and specially equipped to answer a company's unique challenges and guarantee that its IT infrastructure is operating at peak performance. So why should you have an SLA? First of all, it's much more effective. The process is faster and the IT cost is lower. The risks of business failure or productivity losses are transferred from your business to us with a fixed cost solution. An outstanding level of your IT infrastructure performance, service, flexibility, and reliability is guaranteed. And you can finally focus on the core of your business. Now, what does the SLA cover? 
in general, anything, your entire IT infrastructure will be covered. We maintain each of your hardware, devices, software, and operating systems. SLA provides you with online, telephone, email, and on-site support in addition to other deliverables. We have managed more than 150-plus SLA projects. And what do our clients say? They're extremely satisfied. So do you need your IT infrastructure to be up and running without downtime? Contact us to help you. Let's back to the operational level agreement or OLA is an agreement between an IT service provider and another part of the same organization. For example, between teams within the IT department. An OLA supports the IT service provider's delivery of IT service in accordance with the SLA to the customer. And now you are among friends so you can talk techie. For example, the IT department of a manufacturing organization has a total of 20 SLAs in place for the various services it provides to its internal customer. The network team leader has commented to the service level manager that his department finds it difficult to understand what level of service it has to provide to which customers at what time. The service level manager suggests they sit down and draft an OLA. They review all the SLAs and identify how each service target relates to the network service. They note where a common level of service is needed across many customers and where a special levels of services are required for particular customers. They know create one simplified set of service targets and document them in the OLA. Now, the network team has a single set of targets to meet that allows it to meet the targets in the SLA. The next document is under pinning contracts. According to the ITIL, a underpinning contract, or UC, is a contract between an IT service provider and a third-party supplier. The third-party supplier provides goods or services that support delivery of an IT service to a customer. The UC defines targets and the responsibilities required to meet accurate service level target in the SLA. No differences exist between a contract and an unpinning contract. The term just reminds you that the contract must underpin the targets in your SLA. You negotiate and manage the contracts you have with your suppliers by using the supplier management process or uh, in the getting friendly with third party supplier or supplier management in the later chapter we will talk about that the service level manager ensure that the supplier manager is clear about the requirements of the part of the service to be provided by the supplier and between the service level manager and supplier manager ensure that the contract underpins the SLA with the customer. Service level requirements for SLR 
are the document requirements of the customer prior to the FLA being agreed. Here is the starting point for negotiation for a major development project. The SLR is the starting point for the design of the service. As the project goes through the service transition stage, testing provides confidence that the requested requirement can be fulfilled. At this stage, you create a draft SLA. As the service is deployed, the significance of the SLR and the SLR becomes the operative document. The SLA is signed as agreed by both parties. Let's see the SLA framework. Ask yourself how many business units and how many IT services you have. For example, say you have 10 business units and 50 IT services. If every customer uses every service, then potentially you may have 500 SLAs. Hands up, anyone who like to manage 500 SLAs. Now, I can already hear you shouting at me, but not all my customers use the same service. So hopefully, you can simplify the number of SLAs you have. Here come some suggestions. Service-based SLA an SLA for one service that describes the target for many customers. And customer-based SLA, an SLA for one customer that describes the target for many services. In addition to these two, you can also have multi-level agreements. Corporate level, an agreement covering the generic issues appropriate to all customers. For example, service levels for common service, such as the email service, how to contact the service desk, how to request change. The next is the customer level. An agreement covering issues relevant to a particular customer or business unit, regardless of the service being used. And the last one is a service level. An agreement covering issues relevant to a specific service for a specific customer. Okay, thank you for watching this movie. At the next movie, I will talk about the customer satisfaction. Thank you.